As a product manager, you'll be working really closely with product designers and they could have various titles, but ultimately they would be focused on one of three areas because product design is essentially three overlapping concerns, form, behavior, and content. And under form, you could have roles like graphic designers and industrial designers. And under behavior, you have interaction designers and the interaction designer is focused on the design of behavior, but also concerned with how that behavior relates to form and the third type of overlapping concern, which is content. Under content, you could have roles like information architect, copywriters and animators, and sound designers. And the design of your product must absolutely be at the forefront of your mind. But this doesn't always mean that you need to be able to design a user interface or create user flows or pick out the perfect color scheme. In reality, the extent to which a product manager is actively involved in design depends on the company. How big is the company? What resources are available? And typically in large companies, the product manager would be working with UX and design people and guiding them and providing feedback rather than doing the hands-on work. But in smaller startups, the product manager might very well also be the designer. And as a general rule, when product managers are working with designers, they should Tell them the what and not the how. So ask for feedback and create a collaborative atmosphere because if your design team feels like you're open to hearing their opinions, you'll be more informed and more likely to make the best product design decisions. And although the product manager doesn't have to be a designer, they do have to understand design thinking. And at its heart, design thinking really embraces a lot of the same concepts and principles as product discovery because it is about using a non-linear process that begins with developing a deep understanding of your customers and then ideating and prototyping and challenging assumptions and reframing the problem to examine alternative strategies and solutions. And it also includes ideation and rapid prototyping and testing with users, a lot of which is very similar to product discovery. And so this section is really a continuation of product discovery, but now we're going to get a bit more hands-on and we'll be doing sketching and we'll be building some prototypes and we'll see the role of various different types of prototypes from paper prototypes to digital prototypes through to native prototypes. Let's take a look at the four design skills that every product manager has to have. Firstly, product managers should have good user research skills and the very best product managers truly understand their customers and can articulate their pain points and desires and needs to other members of the team, often in the form of personas or storyboards. And that means a product manager needs to possess strong research and empathy skills. They have to be able to interview and research customers and synthesize data and gather insights from those conversations. And this is crucial in teams both large and small. And regardless of whether you work for a small startup or for a large company, and techniques used here include field research and usability testing and personas and customer journey maps and storyboarding. And then they need basic interaction design skills. And a good product manager should be able to describe the user's goals and determine product features based on these goals. And beyond that, it's important to describe the overall information architecture of their product and to outline the user's journey through different screens or pages of the product and as teams get larger, the UX designer will probably take on this set of responsibilities, but the product manager must possess the domain knowledge to share insightful feedback. And if you are the de facto UX designer at a small startup, it's also helpful to possess the knowledge of common design patterns and usability principles, so you're not reinventing the wheel every time and frustrating users. And techniques used here include sketching and wireframing and building out user flows and sitemaps and user stories and design patterns. And then thirdly, a good product manager also needs to have taste. And this one might be slightly controversial, but what I'm trying to say here is that good product managers have a quality of taste and you don't need to be a good visual designer yourself, but you need to be able to recognize great design. And the only way to develop your taste is to look at lots of designs, both good and bad, and to think critically about what you do and don't like and why. And eventually you'll hone your own instincts and be able to lead your team in the right direction. So how do you develop taste? Well, some people try to do it by reading articles and going on sites like Medium and examining the different experts in the field and their 
thinking around certain designs, but I believe a much better approach is actually to look not at the rationale, but look at the designs themselves and try to figure out for yourself why one design works over another. And so in the next lesson, we will perform a short exercise where you'll get to go out to a couple of sites and identify a design that works and one that doesn't and share your rationale with other students in this course. So do check out that lesson. All right, and then the final design skill that product managers need to have is to develop an elementary knowledge of visual design concepts. In addition to taste, it's also important to know design vocabulary so that you can communicate on the same terms as a designer and understand the trade-offs and decisions they make in their visual design. And it is much better to discuss issues like contrast, hierarchy, and white space than to simply ask your designer to make the logo bigger. And then the final point that I would like to make is that every product manager must always keep in mind that they shouldn't overstep their boundaries. And this applies not just when working with designers, but also with engineers. Let the designer design and let the engineer code. When working with designers, your role is to provide deep context on user needs and market analysis and focus more on what problems you're solving and let the UI and UX expert have the freedom to define and prototype solutions that you might not have even considered. So give your teammates the freedom and space they need to do a good job. All right, in the next lesson, we will complete the short exercise that will involve finding and putting down on paper your rationale for two designs, one that you like and one that you don't. All right, I'll see you soon.